Another lawsuit has been filed against the concrete company, its owner, and the driver of the truck involved in last month's fatal crash with a school bus. The crash killed two people, five-year-old student Ulysses Rodriguez Montoya and 33-year-old Texas grad student Ryan Wallace, who was driving behind the bus. The lawsuit is filed on behalf of Victoria Limon and a minor who court documents say were both injured in the crash. They're suing for medical expenses, pain and suffering, and loss of wages. They're asking for $1 million. And the Hay CISD board will also have a meeting today about a seatbelt plan for school buses. There were no seatbelts on that bus when it crashed. And in a letter sent to parents, the district says it's, quote, committed to accelerating the normal bus replacement cycle to have a bus fleet fully equipped with seatbelts at the absolute soonest possible date. The plan lists five steps, things like retrofitting older buses with seatbelts and accelerating the purchases of 2025 buses. They're saying much sooner than 12 months, basically, we'll be able to retrofit um, some of our buses retrofit with seatbelts and that will put them at having all of their route buses with seatbelts and then 34 of the, the backup buses with seatbelts. Now, when it comes to getting money for those older buses, the district says it would cost close to $500,000. That money could come from either bond interest money or surplus bond funds. There's a board meeting on this today at 430. Going in depth right now, Austin ISD says that nearly all 500 of its school buses are equipped with seat belts. Leander and Pflugerville ISD say the majority of their buses have belts as well. Round Rock says around 60 of its 251 buses are lacking seat belts. Seat belts on buses weren't required in the state until 2017, and that's when the state's legislature passed a bill requiring them in all new buses. However, though, it did not require older buses to have seat belts installed, leading to districts having both kinds of buses.